Hello and welcome to the series of video lectures on the subject microprocessor for second year IT students. I am Dr. Sri Shal Sarat Kajbhar and in this video lecture we are going to study about internal operation of 886 microprocessor. At the end of this session students will be able to describe the general operation of CPU. They will be able to describe the instruction queue operation for branch related instruction execution. As you are aware that central processing unit or microprocessor unit is responsible for every task that is performed by the computer. To perform any task it requires instruction and data that is stored in the random access memory. Every task is achieved using three important operation cycles namely fetching, decoding and execution. With your experience with the higher level languages such as C language you know that a CPU must facilitate working with assignment and arithmetic expressions, unconditional branches, conditional branches, looping, arrays and other data structures, subroutines and input output etc. Similar to the higher level language execution, a machine language program also executes sequentially except there is a branching. Okay. So it is first desirable to understand the CPU architecture in general and related operations. Figure shows the typical CPU architecture of any computer. It has mainly four parts. As you can see there in the control unit, there is a register named as program counter register or in short PC. It holds the address of the next instruction which is to be executed. There is also a register called as the instruction register which holds the current instruction which is to be executed. There is also another register called as the processor status word which displays the results of various operation which are generated because of the previous instruction execution. There is also a register named as stack pointer for storing the data onto the stack which is required by the program for its latter operations. This set of working registers are divided into two parts or two categories. The set of working registers is divided into two categories namely address register which are responsible for carrying out the address related calculations. There are also set of arithmetic registers for carrying out the computational task. As I have mentioned earlier arithmetic and logical unit is responsible for carrying out the arithmetic and logical operations. Now pause the video for 2 minutes and write down the answer of the following question. I hope you have written the answer. The equivalent register for program counter is instruction pointer along with the CS register in case of 8086 microprocessor whereas the equivalent register for instruction register is nothing but 6 byte instruction queue. The program is generally executed sequentially except branching that is the program counter contains are incremented to point to the next instructions except branching instructions. The figure shows the general operation of CPU. If the current instruction is not a branch instruction then it will execute the instruction and it will set the program counter to the address of the next sequential instruction. If the current instruction is branch instruction then in that case it will first check whether it is a conditional branch or unconditional branch. If it is an unconditional branch then it will set the program counter to the branch address which is specified in the instruction. If it is a conditional branch then in that case it will examine the processor status word register to check whether the branch condition is met or not. If the branch condition is not met then in that case it will set the program counter to the address of the next sequential instruction. If the branch condition is met then in that case it will set PC 
to the branch address. Now let us move to the 8086. In case of 8086 microprocessor, it also follows the general operations of the CPU, but there are some differences. The program counter contents or address of the next instruction which is to be executed is given in this case as the summation of instruction pointer contents and CS contents multiplied by the 10 in hexadecimal. In this case, the instruction register is nothing but the 6 byte first in first out instruction queue which is continuously filled. Now this look ahead feature is very important and, and it increases the overall throughput of the 8086 microprocessor. Now what is happening in this case? The operation in this case is fetching 16 bit data from the memory and storing it in the instruction queue. Now why there is a fetching of 16 bit data? Because you know the address uh, why there is a fetching of 16 bit data? Because the data line of 886 is 16 bit wide. Now what is the motivation for continuously filling the instruction queue? Because suppose the CPU is currently executing a 4 bit multiply instruction which requires 71 clock cycles. Now fetching a word from the memory or 16 bit data or 2 bytes only requires 4 clock cycles. So for the remaining 67 cycles the system bus is free. So microprocessor uses this cycles to fill the instruction queue. Now suppose microprocessor want to execute some machine language code which is stored in the memory location starting from 50,000H to the 50,300H in the random access memory. Now here there are two cases that the starting address of the program to be executed can be an even address or it can be an odd address. Now 886 can address a word which begins with either an odd address or an even address. For even address case only one memory reference is required. For example, fetching of machine code of move al, comma has 0 to h. That is this case. Only requires one memory address. That is, if you want to fetch from even address location 50,000 h, it only requires specification of the lower byte address that is 50,000 h. Whereas for odd address case, two memory references are required. For example, it requires specification of lower byte address that is 50001H as well as higher byte address that is 50002H if starting location of the program is 50001H instead of 50000H. The previous part was for the memory access or fetching of the 16 bit data. Now there is a variation whenever there is a branching to an address because Whenever there is a branching, we have seen in the previous videos that whenever there is a branching, the contents of the current instruction queue are discarded or flushed out because the address where the or the branching address may or may not be present in the instruction queue. So it is again filled whenever there is a branching. Now there are two cases. The first case is there can be a branch to an even address and the second case is there can be a branch to the odd address. Assume the first case that there is a branch to an even address. Now assume there are three instructions. First instruction which is of one byte in length, second instruction of two bytes in length and third instruction of three bytes in length. Okay, So totally six bytes. You also know the instruction byte is also of size six bytes. So this each rectangle is nothing but one byte of data. So this each rectangle has capacity to store one byte of data. That is six byte. In so this figure shows okay, this figure shows the instruction queue having six byte in length. This left hand side shows the memory fetches and this rightmost uh, side shows the actual storage of instruction in the instruction queue. Now whenever there is a branch to an even address the memory fetches are in terms of words that is it fetches two bytes of data. <coughs> this is the 
direction of the entering instruction since it is a first in first out the first byte will go here the second byte will go here and so on so whenever there is a branch to an even address there will be three memory fetches to fetch the six byte of data and the first instruction will be stored here the second instruction which is of two bytes will be stored here and the third instruction will be stored here now for the second case whenever there is a branch to an odd address right so in contrast to the even address case the first fetch will be of only one bytes instead of a word okay and the next fetching will be of two bytes similarly the third fetch will be of two bytes so because of this the first and second instructions are completely there in the instruction queue whereas the third instruction is incomplete now in this case the fourth fetch will not begin until a word is available in the queue okay so the meaning of this is that unless and until the first two bytes are not given to the execution unit the fourth fetch will not begin okay this is for the branching to an odd address this is the reference thank you very much